That green dot there, that's Melbourne, Australia. And the red, that's where Red Rock drums are made. It's about a one hour drive from Melbourne to Roger. The landscape changes from our flat city and suburbs into rolling hills and dairy farms. By the way, my name's Matt, and I own Red Rock Drums. We make incredible stave kits for amazing drummers all around the world. Roger is our master craftsman, and this has been my chance to ask him how he works his magic. Uh, so where do you live? I live in Rugby, Victoria, Australia. People are friendly. You don't get too close to them, of course. <laughs> There's some strange people. This is country. It's not. This is not city. It's it's something different up here. I think um, we've spent a lot of time up here developing the drums, um, and I think being up here, there's a certain calmness to the area. Like my nearest neighbour's a hundred metres away from me. It's easy to think. It's much harder to think when you're surrounded by other factories and and, other, and particularly with other people smashing things around and lots of noise. Right the dog is a distraction, yes. Um, I avoid anything with splits in it, uh, cracks, um, any grain that's really rough because when we come to sand it at the other end there's a good chance that it will be, it'll check. I avoid stuff with uh, with knots because the knots again can be difficult to machine and they can move. Little small little tiny knots can actually move it in and out of the timber. And if they fall out then I've got to fill it and Matt goes nuts if I use filler. One of the things about our drums is that very, very rarely do we ever fill any holes because I choose my wood very, very carefully. This after the wood comes out of the back of the van from picking it up. Um, I lay it out according to the size drum. For example, if we, own, if we want a snare drum, they only need a, you know, a bit over a metre of, of wood for a snare drum. So I'll lay it out and I'll actually chalk where the, uh, the staves are coming out of it. And if there's a bad section, I'll chalk that so I'll make sure I don't use it. Um, with a bass drum, we were using a lot of material. We might be using, say, five or six long boards for a bass drum. Again, it's the same process. I go through it and I make sure that I've got enough wood to get my staves out of a, for example, an 18 inch bass drum has got 32 staves. So it's a lot of wood and the last thing I want is at the other end of it not to have enough and to have you have to scrounge around finding some. So I lay it all out, then I'll cut them all to length, put it all through the planer and thicknesser to get the material to the right thickness. And then I lay them on the, put them on the saw, cut all the staves, put all the angles on the staves. Um, then it gets glued up, and then we take it to the lathe. It goes on the lathe, we process it so we've got it nice and smooth on the inside, um, all the contouring on the inside and outside. Take it off, do all the bearing edges. If we're doing snares, we do the snare beads at the same time. Then it all gets a bit wet. <clears throat> I wet all the outside off, um, let that dry off, and that gives that allows the grain to wet to raise. So that when I give it a final sand, it'll be nice and smooth for going into the polish shop, where it's going to get three or four coats of tongue oil, and then a, a nice waxing after that, and that's the finish of it. In a nutshell. <laughs> Sounds easy when you say it that way. Doesn't it? <laughs> I assemble all the drums with Roger. Once I've established where the front of the drum should be, I mark out the lug positions. Sometimes it is impossible to see the stave joins. In this case, we're just working on one drum to show you the process, but for a whole drum kit, I look for features in the wood that visually connect all the drums. Once I've marked out the holes, Roger and I joke that he gives me his all, a puncturing tool so I can drill accurately. I've always loved woodworking, as a kid I made billy carts that looked like NASCARs, but then I started playing drums, and as a teenager I began buying and selling 30 or more vintage kits to restore. I learnt what made a good drum sound good to my ears. Our internal reinforcement rings and round over bearing edges are just two results of this. When I met Roger in 2001, we hit it off as mates straight away. It took me a while to get him to build me some shells, but the wait has been worth it. Formally, we've been at it since 2008. 
The beauty of a stave drum is the wood is in a rested state. There are no sheets of ply bent around each other with layers of glue in between. Our drums are richer and fuller. They have amazing response, resonance and sustain. And with our local Australian timbers, they have beautiful unique tonal characteristics you won't find anywhere else. We treat every red rock drum that leaves us as one that could end up in the hands of a spectacular person, as they so often do. We consider them all to be our best work. The last fitting we attach is the badge. It's the trickiest to fit because of those tiny cap screws and washers. There are so many unique qualities of a red rock drum, but I feel like the fitting of the badge is the birth of each new drum. It's where it takes its first breath into the new world. Who knows where it'll end up? Service and reputation are vital to us, and I love designing new orders to suit customers' needs perfectly. Every Red Rock drum comes with a lifetime warranty, testament to the quality of our products and our belief in what we do. We have never looked for overnight success. We seek true success. We trust that when a drummer buys a Red Rock drum, they have bought more than just our great sound.